This video is brought to you by Alien Clothing. All right, everybody, shut up. Bruh. All right, I don't want to hear any of it. It's a good movie. I know exactly what you're thinking, but it is a good movie. Look at it. The visuals, spectacular. The characters, charming. I love the action. The pacing was wonderful. And you know what? You know what? You want to know what it has? I really loved stealing from rich people, and also the you know hot fox girl. Oh, shit. Hi guys, I'm here to review The Bad Guys, the newest DreamWorks film. And I gotta say, I loved it. I loved it so much. And yeah, go ahead and judge me to the nth degree. I know what I'm about, but I, I implore you to watch the film yourself and tell me what you think. Because for me, it was a wonderful time. Let me explain. By the way, um, Zootopia, yeah. Cool, you know, that's so neat. Tra trying to be a, you know, a detective. I'm over here with the Chad bad guys. Yeah, the Virgin Zootopia versus the Chad bad guys, where we're we're out driving circles around cops and, and, and blowing up helicopters. You know, that's what we're about. Obviously, I joke. Both movies are great in their own respective regards. But I had to make fun of Zootopia. So The Bad Guys here is based on a book by Aaron Blaby. It was a successful scholastic series. And when you look at the visuals in The Bad Guys books, it's quite different compared to that on the big screen, where you have like these illustrations that have, of course, a style to them with like the black and the white. And they look a bit more just rough around the edges. Not bad. But then you look at the big screen version and it still has a style and you can see how it's inspired by the illustrations from the books. But to me, it seems a bit more refined in a stylized way of its own. I, I don't really know how to describe it. They, they both look so neat and, 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 and distinct, but at the same time, it's like the books, the movie. They're different, but similar. I feel the vibe connection between the two, hence why the movie was inspired by the books. It makes sense, duh. But for what it's worth, there is obviously a difference. And I think that's neat. I think it's cool that you can have something like the book and then it spin off something inspired by the book to a movie that looks like this. Wow, well said, Saber Spark. All right, so the movie itself was directed by Pierre Perifel, screenplay by Eaton Cohen. So to me, it's like DreamWorks is this studio that is a step above illumination where you have these releases where it's like, wow, this is outstanding. Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2, How to Train Your Dragon. I, 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 of course, the creme de la creme of the Prince of Egypt. But then you have films like Home from DreamWorks. And it's like, oh my God, what were you thinking? This was not good. So DreamWorks has this ability to really surprise you where it's like, you can do it. You can be good both for your stories, your characters, and of course the visuals, but you also have the ability to kind of just, I don't know, swing and miss. But this one here was a grand slam. Let me just start with the visuals, because that's like the thing that was the most, of course, eye-catching for me, for the bad guys. I love the designs. They ooze with personality, and they're so stylized. Even the background humans are stylized. I'm here for this new era of animation, where it's like, we're not going for hyper-realistic. We want this cool stylized design where it's like, and you gotta, of course, give props to Spider-Verse. And I know everybody's like, Spider-Verse this, Spider-Verse that. It's true though. Spider-Verse did a great job of kicking down the door for being critically and financially such a big hit that other studios and creators are like, hey, maybe we can start doing the same thing. We don't have to be stuck in this, this microcosm of, of hyper-realistic or accurate characters. We can go outside of that. We don't need to have every single piece of hair on a character like animated. We can do something a bit more stylized and different. And I'm here for that. I think it's so freaking cool. I mean, look at Puss in Boots 2. Like, I did not really care for the previous films, but the sequel from DreamWorks coming out in December is doing the same thing with its stylization, with its with its action, with its movement, where it's like, the, the, of course, the textures. And, and it's of course, it's like, yo, this is, has to have been inspired by Spider-Verse. Come on. And that's okay. I, I'm Again, I'm here for it. So for the characters, you got Wolf. 
You got piranha. You got tarantula. You got shark. You got oh, what's this? What's the other one? Snake. Uh, I, I I do like that these their animal names are just you know snake, wolf, whatever. And that works. There's a really funny like because <laughs> folks who are probably trying to be really immersed might be frustrated by the fact that it's a human world with a bunch of anthro creatures walking around, but there's also like animals that are just animals. And then you have moments where it's like the wolf's at a crime scene or about to do a robbery. And the police are like on guard, like we have to find the wolf, where could he be? And then a wolf guy wearing a mustache walks in and they're like, who, where could the wolf guy be? And it's like, I don't know, maybe the wolf walking in, but that's part of the charm. We have a literal shark who's like the, the, the disguise person. And it's like, obviously, you know, a shark, but everybody else is so like dumb to it. That's charming to me. I think that's funny. It's like movie, explain things. And it's like, no. And it just proceeds forward anyway, because it, it, it's having fun. And that's, I like that. Also, I gotta say, th this is just furry Lupin, you know? Wolf is just furry Lupin, the detective, uh, the, the Zingati or Zinigata from Lupin. Like, you can't tell me that there was an inspiration for Chief Misty of these police and her, like, even her police run around in a mob that's similar to Detective Zinigata from, like, Lupin. I love that. The the big, like, meat-headed, you know, I'm for justice, I'll chase you down, but clearly they aren't, like, the sharpest crayon in the knife drawer. So that, that's a fun chemistry to me. And speaking of characters, the chemistry from the entire gang, wonderful. I loved it. I, I thought they had good back and forth and, and give and take. You got Diana, the, the uh, spoilers, by the way. Diana here is the governor. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Here we go. She's also Bay. Oh, oh my God. There's some scenes where she's doing stuff and I'm like, mm. <laughs> Umph, <laughs> lip bite, baby. Nah, I mean, I, I challenge you to freaking watch it yourself and I'm gonna be thrown in jail. But uh, yeah, Diane's pretty great and I like her twist. It's That's the thing about it, uh, folks who were like, oh man, I saw this twist and I saw that twist. It was so obvious. I'm like, well, yeah, because it's a heist movie. So you're already on guard trying to read between the lines. And even I felt that something early on in the film, I saw a character and I'm like, that's the villain. And that's the villain disguised as blah. And I saw right through it and I was correct. And I'm like, that's not a problem. It's okay to have quote unquote predictable plots as long as they're well executed with fun characters. And as far as like the arc of said characters where this entire film is about Wolf and, and is probably says his synopsis here before I proceed any further. I should have said this before. Wolf and his gang are world-renowned thieves, and their class acts as far as like being the best of their field, except for some other thieves who are just slightly better. And you got like the computer hacker, the master of disguise, the enforcer, the wild card, and they're the bad guys because they're animals that folks are just clearly put off by. Oh no, a shark, a spider, a wolf. They scare me. I don't want to be around them. So for them, they're like, well, fine. Well, if we can't be good because society hates us, then we'll just be bad because we're good at being bad, which kind of reminds me of the Netflix film Back to the Outback, which kind of has a similar theme where it's like we're snakes and scorpions and no one likes us even though we try to be good and and you know that's an okay film by the way uh, I, I say it's good enough to watch back to bad guys so that's the theme where you got a bunch of animals who are like predators or uh, most human you know culture looks at these animals as like the on the fringe because they're like you know oh a shark terrifying a piranha ah and and that's what we're running with because wolf here discovers that he actually likes to feel good. He doesn't want to always do bad things. He's kind of put in a predicament where he's like, shoot, now I'm challenged. Where do I stay loyal to my gang who've always done bad things? Or do I kind of pursue this path of trying to be better? Because the gang got arrested. They made some offers saying, hey, this character can make us good. If we're good, can we be let off the hook? But don't worry, it's a plan. We're going to pretend to be good and then steal something and then escape. But of course, you know, Wolf goes native. And uh, that's where the conflict begins. You know, loyalty to your gang, wanting to be good, uh, getting tired of doing the same old, same old. And that's, and that's the crux of the entire film. And again, it's simple enough, but enjoyable to me. Especially when you got like Wolf Wagon his tail. It's cute. I thought that was sweet. Give me, uh, give me Lagoshi vibes from uh, Beastars. And but in particular, the back and forth between Snake and Wolf, really like that. I actually could feel like the tension between the two where it's like, yeah, what do you do when you're put in this predicament where you as an individual don't want to be on the same path anymore with one of your best friends? Like that's that's quite the conflict of interest. And I, I liked it. 
As I said uh, before, the pacing was great, wonderful music, insane action scenes. There were some fights and some chases where I'm like on the edge of my seat. And I'm like, whoa, this is amazing with the with the blur of the characters just darting down the road and this very dynamic action where I'm like, I feel like I'm in the thick of it. I love it. The storyboard artist did a wonderful job where I'm like watching these scenes and I'm like, damn, uh, so cinematic. And I, I like the backgrounds, the texture, the lighting, the colors, just mm, everything. It just, it hits so, so perfectly for me. And I know folks are like, that's because you are a furry savory spark. And I'm like, shut up, mom. I like the movie. So clearly I'm just gushing all over the place and I'm trying my best to like reel it in. Folks are like, no, you're not. But I will try to at least add a little bit of like criticism. There's an entire fart joke thing with Piranha. I thought that was a little bit cringe at first, but to their credit, they weaved it in as a plot device for the film. I thought some of the, like the, the villain, I was like, okay, you're just kind of a run of the mill villain to me. You, you, nothing exceptional, nothing terrible. Just, you know, you served your purpose. I, I saw some folks being like, oh, the, uh, for some of these characters, they changed their path way too easily. It should have taken some more, I guess, character development for them to reach a certain point. A uh, spoiler uh, for Diane, she's actually like the governor, but she was this world renowned thief beforehand. And I saw some people saying like, oh, you know, she should have taken her more time to change her ways. It was just uh, so dumb that she's a governor. And I'm like, okay, I, th I think they're being a bit nitpicky, but I can see where they're coming from. But for me, the story itself, you know, wasn't like some grand epic. It was nice contained bunch of quote unquote bad animals and a gang of thieves and, and them challenging their ways and stereotypes because of the animals of who they are. And that's the power of like anthro storytelling of designs because it's so universal to us as you know the, the human race when you see a fox what do you think a thief you see a wolf oh it's scary a shark oh my god it's gonna rip me apart and that's good that's that's powerful stuff and i thought it was well used so well in the movie which of course props to the books for laying down that foundation so from the story to the characters to the themes to the arcs to the dialogue to the music to just everything i love this film I, I thought it was one of the best things that DreamWorks has made in quite some time, especially when it comes to the visuals, and I highly recommend it. So uh, go check out the movie if you want. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, and uh, I'm going to go take my, you know, self outside and, and deny myself even more for things that you all are accusing me of. Don't judge me, ooh woo. Okay, just this once. Atriox, and I am the last face you will ever see. Mommy Milkers. So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Alien Clothing. Guys, I have two modes when it comes to my outfits. Either I'm dressed like the dad from Mitchell's versus the machines, or I'm dressed like Adam Sandler when he's out in public. Hey, listen, all right? Basketball shorts are peak comfort, and I will hear no slander against their holy reign. You got it? Try them yourself. Basketball shorts. Unleash your inner middle schooler. All right, jokes aside, I've been meaning to make a new addition to my wardrobe for quite some time now, but I wasn't quite sure what was considered ideal for me. Like a friend of mine does streetwear and I'm like, ooh, that looks stylish and comfortable. I want stuff like that. And fortunately for me, you know, not knowing anything at all, uh, Alien hit me up. Now, for those who don't know, Alien is an indie streetwear clothing company that was started in early 2017 by YouTube creator Elvis the Alien. And he's really gone places with it. Elvis is a big fan of games, movies, aliens, of course, science fiction, monsters, and, and you see that passion really reflected on his clothing designs. Like, check out what I got from his store. Bam, the goat demon shirt. That's what I'm calling it. I also got this long sleeve smiley face shirt, which I love wearing this around the house. It is so comfy. And then two of my new favorite hoodies that I've been like rocking out. I got one that's like extra large and the one that's large. So I like whenever I'm like, oh, I just want to be poofy, fun 
fun today. Poofy fun. That's what I call it. I just want to be comfy in my big old hoodie. I put that one on. When I'm like out in public being not poofy fun, I put on my smaller version. Clearly, I don't know clothes, so I'm really glad that aliens helped me out here because, God, I needed that help. Uh, I've been wearing these hoodies a lot, uh, almost daily for the past month. And I've got to say, I'm loving these clothes. Aliens designs are very carefully created by some of the best artists from around the world. Also, these designs go fast. And most items are never restocked. But fear not, Alien is constantly coming out with new creative designs. They also use the best quality fabrics available in the market while still trying their best to keep every item affordable. So all in all, I'm a big fan of these clothes. They're comfy, stylish, and very unique with their creative designs. Definitely the wardrobe upgrade that I desperately needed. So hit up the description and the link down below and go to alienclothing.com today. Save 20% off by using the code SABERSPARK. Also, any orders over $100 get free shipping, so go check them out today.